In other news, a sports casting legend has died. Howard Cosell had been suffering from cancer, Parkinson's and heart disease. Jim Huber takes a look back at his celebrated career. What did I do? Told it like it was. Again and again and one more time he did. Standing in judgment of the games men play with a sharp tongue gavel, a jury of just one. Howard Cosell was like no other who has ever breathed into a microphone. And if you don't believe that, all you had to do was ask him how he saw himself. The best there was of what he did, quite candidly. I had a full and complete broadcast life. It, it was a great time, it really was. We had so much fun, but uh, everything passes. From New York City Radio to ABC's Monday Night Football to the erudite pawn of a young Muhammad Ali, Cosell hitched his star to a thesaurus and rode his vocabulary to grand heights. I didn't hear the gentleman from the NCAA talk about all of the postulates that we have in the sports syndrome in this country, each of which is a natural concomitant of the next. That the game is sacred. That winning isn't everything, it's the only thing. He jousted with powerful windmills over a legendary career, but in his later years, after leaving Monday night in ABC, he took leave of his boxing duties as well. Boxing zills are now so deep, so widespread, and I came to the conclusion that America should follow the lead of Sweden and Norway. That here in the United States, we should also abolish boxing. His was a mountain of venom, scattershot at boxing and racism, and at times at sports in general. Sadly, for once he knew full well the honor of his place at life's table. I was privileged to cover a flow of events that I don't think anybody else was ever privileged to cover. And, uh, and I, uh, I loved it, most of it. Howard Cosell was 77. It is nine before the hour. He was 77 years old when he died this morning to tell it like it is. About the man who told it like it was, Howard Cosell, his colleague, Dick Schaap. <laughs> How are you? Good to see you. Howard Cosell was a colon. We'll do exactly that, Dandy Don. For a quarter of a century, from the 60s to the 90s, he towered over sports on television. Watch number 89. He complained to the officials to no avail. But look at that. He hitched himself to Muhammad Ali's star, and Ali hitched himself to Howard's. I'm always confident I'm with all of them. You're being extremely truculent. Whatever succulent mean, if that's good, I'm there. Cosell thrust himself into the middle of the racial turmoil of the 1968 Olympic Games. I saw myself as a person who wanted to bring to public attention that which I thought was wrong. Nothing more, no less than that. Then he teamed up with Frank Gifford and Don Meredith and turned Monday Night Football into an American institution as big as he was. Hello again, everyone. I'm Howard Cosell, and it is a typically wind-blown candlestick park, and frankly, I am cold. Cosell was so big that when Woody Allen wanted a sportscaster for his movie, Bananas, he tapped Howard. Been shot. When did you know it was all over? Fascist. Dictator. Well, of course, you're upset, and that's understandable under the circumstances. Cosell was so big that Bob Lipsight, a gifted sports journalist himself, suggested... There's no question that Howard Cosell was the most important sports journalist of our time, and because so much of what he did transcended sports, he was one of the most important journalists, period. Cosell was so big, Billy Crystal launched his career by imitating Howard. Sonny Liston's not coming out! He kept screaming that, I'm going up there! I'm going up there. He kept doing that. Of course, Cosell had his critics. He stinks! Some threw bricks at TV sets, some threw brick bats at Rune Arledge, then president of ABC Sports. I went through periods with him when you couldn't believe the hate mail, you couldn't believe the pressure that it brought from everything from the U.S. government to advertisers to sports writers to fans. Cosell influenced TV sports in so many ways, some positively, 
He was a reporter when almost no one else was, and some negatively. He often seemed to think he was bigger than the story. I'm an ordinary man who did what he wanted to do and tried to do it his way. Howard Cosell didn't always tell it like it was, but he always told it like he thought it was. Was it his style or was it his content? Uh, it was a mixture of both. The thing about Howard, though, he was a wonderful comedian. I, I mean, we were laughing, watching some of that. He took himself deadly serious. When he was funny, sometimes deliberately, sometimes accidentally, he was a great entertainer. Sadly, bitter at the end. Very bitter at the end, and that's one of the things I'll never be able to understand. He had a life that anyone I ever met would have exchanged with him. He lived a wonderful, wonderful life, and, and that's, I couldn't understand why at the end he was better. Yes, and his upside said, you know, the most important sports journalist of our time, and it never, that wasn't enough for Howard. His influence will last for, for, for decades, both positive and negative. All right, Dick Shep, thanks very much. And it's five before the hour. We'll continue in just a moment. You can wait and wait to get a passport or travel with us, and you don't have to wait at all. We'll explore Austria, Germany, the Netherlands, Belgium, and France. Join us for Good Morning America's Passport to Europe. May 1st through the 12th on ABC.